Wednesday on YouTube. Have I got your guys' attention? <laughs> a buddy of mine, when I used to do um, an amateur stand-up comedy, uh, he would do that. He would start, well, he, he would technically go, Woohoo! Tuesday night in Darboy, which Darboy's right outside Appleton, Wisconsin. Regardless, but that's what he would do as his attention getter to get the, the crowd, the audience to uh, at least for the first five minutes pay attention. So, <laughs> well, welcome back, guys. My name is Nick, in case you didn't know that already. And this is a, another installment of Fairy Talk. <laughs> Should have like a pipe, be like, gather round, children, it's story time. <laughs> Anyways, I digress and we will go back right into this because I got a lot to talk about. My picture frame, quick change out picture frame project. Uh, I want to um, show you guys a picture. Chris Mooney had made one. And it's impressive that he made my project. But it's, it's even more impressive to me. Like It was within 24 or at least you know 48 hours after my video was out, he made it. So that shows how quick of a project. And man, that, that guy moves quick. And you can see here, he, he added to it. He actually added the... The vertical 4x6 is here jutting off, and uh, I thought that was a really um, neat addition. In fact, I wish I would have thought of that. That was really cool. And um, it's just neat to see how I can make one project, and then somebody can inject their creativity um, to it and expand on it and make it a little bit unique and make it even cooler yet. So Chris did an awesome job on that. <clears throat> and... Uh, I haven't done one of these fairy talks in, pri I think I skipped two weeks. And uh, that's mostly because um, in, in America, July 4th, Independence Day, that's a big holiday. And that kind of kicks off our summer. But, man, it did not kick off our summer as far as weather. I, uh, I actually had off work from July 1st, I think it was, to like the 6th. And um, so it was July 1st. So it's first day of July, in case you don't know math. Um, July 1st, I went out to my shop at around quarter after five in the morning and I was just going to get things going and get in a really good full day. It was 45 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll put, there you go, for Celsius. And it was so at 45 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm like, wow. So I had to go back in and put some pants on and get a sweatshirt on and stuff. I was just blown away. That was supposed to be the, uh, essentially the kickoff weekend to our summer. And up north, that's where we went for July 4th. That's, that's Wisconsin talk, up north. But uh, up north, they had uh, probably 20 minutes up north from us, north of us. Had frost warnings the night before. Frost warnings. It was July 1st. Frost warnings. That's, that's uh, in case you guys don't live in a frosty you know, area, they, they put out frost warnings. So um, you can bring in your flowers or your begonias or, or whatever, you know, and make sure that those are all indoors and you know i guess the frost will kill them i'm not much of a is it a herbiculturalist i have no idea a botanist i'm, I'm not a in case you guys haven't realized i am not a botanist now that we have that taken care of uh, and i don't have green thumbs i really don't i i, I think uh, mowing the lawn and stuff like that is the most mundane activities <laughs> anyway so for july 4th it was a lot of fun and that's why i didn't have a project out um, last week, because that just, I, I re quickly realized that like Friday, Saturday, Sunday are like my, like, I got to build something. Those are, if I'm like out of the shop, you know, for a weekend, there's like no chance of getting anything out. But we went up north and, uh, uh, you know, on the lake and uh, it was, it was a lot of fun uh, cruising around. There's tubing and water skiing and all that good stuff. And, and being it was uh, uh, July 4th. For, for Americans, that's, uh, that's our Independence Day. And uh, in fact, I think Canadians have Canada Day on July 1st. So it shares kind of the same weekend. Correct me, Canadians, if I'm wrong. But um, So July 4th, we had to have some, some beautiful fireworks. And I like fireworks. And no better way to celebrate your independence than uh, blowing shit up. So uh, that's how we do it here. <laughs> but no, they were fun. It was, it was cool to see them. Um, my oldest likes them, the youngest one sits like that for like the whole weekend because he's like when's the next firework going off you're like two days from now calm down but anyways <laughs> um and then going into another project this is going a few projects back but i did the apple boxes for a photography friend of mine that project was focused around 
having no fasteners visible. I didn't even want brad nails, pin nails, anything like that. And mostly because the purpose for that was uh, for photography. And if those boxes were to end up in the photograph, um, I didn't want any distractions from the actual subject itself. So that was a focus. And I, and I got a good response on those boxes, and that's really cool. A lot of people saying, oh, I prefer to do most of my woodworking um, with, you know, fastener-free, fastener-view-free, either way. But that's not how I do all my projects. And in fact, the following project, I did that barbecue tray. And I actually highlighted the screws and I, I made that because, I mean, it was a woodworking themed project. So I actually highlighted the screws and put finishing washers on. And, and in case you guys have missed any of these projects that I'm talking about, just so I, I don't imagine anybody would just watch the fairy talks, but the build videos is normally what I refer to. Um, but that one was cool. I got a really cool response. The YouTube analytics said that it was the most commented video that I've had in six months. I think that's how they do those, those anal, analactics, <laughs> analytics, but, um, I used glue bots for uh, ketchup and mustard, and then I used the, the mini glue bot, the babe bot, for um, salt and pepper. And that was just really cool. I got an overwhelming response on uh, the woodworking theme on that. I had a napkin holder that held the, well, that held the napkins, but it was like a table saw guard. And in case you guys haven't seen these, a lot of woodworkers are using them. Um, give them a try. I actually got my first glue bot from Mike Fulton. He's got a, another YouTube or a, a YouTube channel. I'll leave his link down below, but he sent me this one and I fell in love with it. it. You don't have to sit there and shake it to get all the, you know, the glue to go to the end. And then it depends on, you know, it, it's just a lot more control in the glue. I just, I just really dig them. So that is really cool. And speaking of YouTubers sending stuff, I thought this was really cool. I'll first give you the backstory though. Uh, in case you haven't ever figured out, I am uh, as goofy as can be, and if you ever meet me for like five minutes, you'll you'll probably get sick of me. But but um, I when I started this YouTube thing, uh, I had to take a picture for like I don't know what you call it, like thumbnail, avatar, profile picture, or whatever. And my wife was taking the pictures, you know, the snappy snappies, and um, she was we were probably fifty pictures in. And she's like, none of these are, you know, I didn't, I don't, I'm, it's not that I'm not photogenic. It's just, I don't know how to pose. So, and she's like, just be you, just, just be the goofball that you are. And then of course I just pulled out one of these little, you know, whatever, whatever that was. And she goes, there you go. That's it. And then it, that stuck. And that's my, <laughs> that's my profile picture. And I don't, I don't see changing that anytime soon. It's really growing on me. But Charles Deering, who's also got a YouTube channel, and I'll put his link down in the description, um, he is a scroll saw artist, and he cut this bad boy, this bad boy out for me, and I was just blown away. I thought this was really cool of him. He sent, in fact, it should go, I think, more like that. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was weird seeing it in in a larger size like this. But it, he did a really, really nice job, and thank you, Charles. I appreciate that. And uh, that was just super cool to get that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try and convince my wife to we'll mount that above the headboard of the bed or something. I, yeah, I doubt it. I'd probably go over like a pregnant pole vaulter. But, but either way, I'll, I'll give it a hard-fought effort. <laughs> um, and then a couple other questions I had on, um, not necessarily specific to the barbecue grilling tray, but just kind of in general, where do I, how do I plan my projects or do I, do I start and sketch up? Do I start with grid paper? Do I just go out to the shop and start cutting away? Um, it, it all depends on the project. If it's a, it's a more exacting project where a lot of dados and a lot of intricate parts, or I have to be fairly precise laying out sheet goods and stuff like that, I will start and sketch up. However, as a hobby for me, it, this never started out as like a CAD, you know, enthousi enthusiasm or, um, you know, or drafting, uh, passion. This was always a woodworking passion. So I would inherently just go out to the shop and start cutting. But for that barbecue grilling tray, um, I'll even show you my little sketchbook here. I, I drew it out in fairly good detail of, you know, I wanted the, the glue bots for the dispensers and I wanted wood, wood saw handles and I wanted the table saw guard and, and stuff like that. And in fact, you can see here, um, I even had um, like a saw blade design for either the front or the back and that just kind of got ixnate as I, as I went along. But, um, and there's actually a couple more projects on this sheet that are built in to do more. I got a, uh, a couple more that are, that are on there that 
hopefully it'll come up as, as a future project for an outdoor summertime project. So, And uh, lastly, but not least at all, I want to give a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I was... I just got a new one the other day, and I messaged him right away and said thanks. And um, you guys are just awesome. And I know it's big controversy, you know, whether people pay Patreon. Um, but I got to say, you guys are awesome. I was doing the numbers. I was doing the math. And I forget what it was. I should have written this down. But it, it was like for every, like, $5 a month somebody gives you on Patreon, I mean, that's, like, equal to, like, 20,000 um, YouTube views or something. It's it's extraordinary. And, um I just want to thank you guys all, and if and if you guys are able to, definitely check out my Patreon page. I'll put that link below as well. Um, that's just an awesome way to support what I'm doing, and you know, not, I wouldn't I wouldn't say keep the show going, but um, it allows me to expand. There's a few pieces of equipment I would like to try and swing and get, and I have some rocking projects that I was going to do on two different pieces of equipment. Hopefully, I can get those um, before too long. Just some out of the box thinking when it comes to some of these projects. So once again, thanks to all of you on Patreon. Well, that about wraps it up. I hope I wasn't too wacky for you guys this week. I will give you a quick sneak peek on a project that I have been designing and thinking about doing for the last like three years. And uh, it's a combination cross cut table saw sled and miter sled. And I'm building it out of Baltic birch. This thing is coming together nicely. I'm hoping to have that video out this Friday. Uh, a lot of extrusions involved and it's accurate. It is super, super accurate. And um, so hopefully I can get uh, editing on that almost as much as I'm done uploading this video. So until I see you guys next time, you guys take care.